so CT side Mirage. We can start with the uh, basic things you can do on A side first. So for the A anchor and the connector player. So a basic thing to do is for throw the molly and then uh, and just practice flash in the middle. And uh, this will help the over in window like peak middle. But again, this is not really like this is not important for for what's for what's going on on A side. So. So you need to find out what kind of like plays you can make both alone and as a team when you're on A side. So a thing you can do is for example when you molly ramp, and then you can bounce a flash down here. And then you can fight, fight it down here with the flash. And then uh, when there's no one here, you can like smoke it off and then you have all of ramp control, right? So this is one way of like taking map control and making a play alone. Another thing you can do, which is very common in Fox, is where you molly here, then you go close, and then you smoke the molly yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then, then you can play close from early round. And then, of course, you can play close palace, and then ask for your connector player to flash you in. Again, this is a, like a, something that's really clever, if, if you have noticed this. so. If you notice, like the top mid smoke, if, if it flies like this, like this, right? You can see this trajectory, and then instead of this trajectory, which is the normal one, right? So you can see that as a window player, where where the smoke comes from. So often, if the if the A player, like if if the T side smokes like this, it's all it's often the A lurker who's smoking like that. And if, if the window player sees that smoke, if you have a good spawn at CT, you can actually come up into Palace before the T side is up here. You can come all the way up here and before the T side is here. So that's a really like good little niche funny thing you can do if you if you notice that as your offer. And so um, so let's talk about how how to defend the A side. So you have like two possibilities. You can either fight for it. Where you play like uh, behind fire or uh, behind triple bars or at default or shadow, and then you can play retake. Where again you can actually be at fire and then you can like take one fight and then fall back, or where you just uh, where you're just sitting in CT and either jumping like this, or you can sit and watch like this, the cross here, and then you can, or you can just jiggle, you know. So, so. Uh, like the retake part, it's not like that important. It's pretty basic. But if you have to fight for it, you have to like talk with the teammates. How how do you want to to fight for it? Okay, so so let's say the talk about the execute that you feel the most on Mirage CT side. Well, the the execute you feel like the people most use against you is probably the, these like A smoke, right? And then Molly here and Molly here. Okay. So if you, as an A anchor player, you sit in default, then you need to know, well, what, what possibilities, what options do you have? You know there's a guy palace, you know the main main people of the push will push out ramp. So so what you, like the first thing you need to do is to um, talk with your team and then and say like, okay, well, if you're getting pushed, like you're the guy in action here, so he's basically in -game, the in-game leader. So this guy, he, he tells, like, he asks for the flashes and then give the flashes names. So, like, you can call this flash, like, a, I don't know, bird flash and fucking dog flash. I don't know, you know. So you have a flash. So you know why it's called, right? It doesn't matter what the name is. So if he sits here, then he can say bird flash. And then he, know he, can, he knows he can peek with it and it lands in front of triple. Or, yeah, he can call treacherous flash and then he have to, has to wait for it, right? And then he can fight with it again. But the, like these are super important because when you play as a as the A anchor here, you need to, to have this established so you can tell your teammates if you want to fight for it or not. And if you want your teammates to fight for it, you can ask for like maybe the bird flash here and then you have your connector player jump down sandwich and then help you. Or he can even like, if he has a molly, he can molly up palace. He will often not have a smoke since he's gonna smoke it here, right? But then you can ask for him to, to like molly palace and then you can uh, give him like the bird flash so you can fight on it yourself 
And then like your possibilities are to like peek from the the right side, peek from the left side, or you can jump up here and peek like this. Or you can even fall back here, because you know palace is is molly, right? So you can actually fall back and then hold Tetris, and then you can ask for the flash, and then you can jump up without them knowing or seeing you. So a good counterplay is if you have a smoke, right? And they throw them on the balcony. If you throw a smoke here, often the lower level teams will actually not notice you. Like they, they wouldn't think of you being default. So they're just gonna run head first and try and wall bang and kill you because they think you're in the smoke. But you can actually just sit here and then kill them whenever they come. And then again, like you have all of the agency and all of the action is like, is the A anchor who has to take that, right? It's the same concept from here. Like when you play behind triple, it's better to, to wait until they do the execute and then ask for maybe a flash again it can be the bird flash or a fucking monkey flash, dog flash or whatever you call it and then like pick your fight like instead of like peek it like this like area wide don't just swing out and then because then you're gonna fight like three different fights as, w as once so if you maybe like ask the flash boom, kill one and then you can fall back right okay so if you play retake right then you have to talk about the scenarios. So let's say there's a scenario where there's two T players in CT spawn. One is here peeking, another guy here is uh, anti flash, and then you have maybe a guy Tetris and a guy Palace. And then it's a 4v4 retake, right? Set up these scenarios for yourself and, and then talk about okay, well, if we retake from CT, how do you want to do it? Well, you want to do it step by step, right? So you have your armor, flash, maybe for two guys to push out and peek. Okay, when so let's say you have this control here. Okay, well, what do you need now? Well, you need to clear noob box, right? So you have a, you have someone with a molly, probably the B player or the short player, and then you hold this angle. Okay, there's no one here. Okay, next angle to clear, it's the uh, the apex corner. So you flash high, and then you can peek here, and have your over lock this angle here, and then lock on on here, right? And then you, you just do it like this, right? Step by step. You talk about how you want to take it and how, how you want to retake the entire site. So just do it step by step because you have like 40 seconds to before you the bomb that goes off, right? It's the same with if there is an A execute on the way. On the way it's actually the um, either the connector player or the window player is one of them. The other one has to help out the A player, right? But it's either it's one of them and then the short player have to watch out for a mid flanker even like push all the way up and try and find him here and like look underpass before you can focus on retaking a because often in uh, like when you meet an a execute on a on the team level they're gonna they're gonna come and uh, have a lurker out mid somewhere so this is like just a couple of things again like you need you need to to talk about it and you need to like make like make make some set plans and make uh, like uh, how like you have to like talk about how you want to react to whatever they do and then have set up a structure so this is just a one way of doing it right there's a million different ways of you can do it you just need to like make sure to do it the way you want it to but this way is really good but if the way I showed you here, but it's only good if you if you have good communications on your team. Okay, so let's go over to middle. So let's say your middle guy, he's um, or uh, you have a hard time holding middle. Okay, and uh, let's say your upper comes in window, he gets smoked off, and you want to fight for middle. Well, then you you smoke down here, bottom connector. You have your short guy. Molly underpass and then you have your A, A anchor player throw a flash down middle through the smoke here it's gonna blind everyone out middle and then you have both the connector guy and the short guy just swing out and fight and then you can fall back afterwards or you can ask for another flash and then it can come or even you can wait for the orbit to come so on the flash you can actually post here on the top left and then you can end up in a setup where the opposite sits here and then you have your your connector player sitting here in underpass and then the B players can have a good setup there again but this is something we're going to talk about when we come towards the um, 
the team wide setups when I when I talk about that, right? Okay, so this is one way of retaking middle. You can like find other ways, like be creative. You can yeah, I don't know, do like some kind of smoke out short and have a have a guy maybe stand out here and hold other bus while I don't know. Or you can just lay peak mid, you know? Like again, you don't have to fight for it every time. Uh, as for the B players, a lot of times the B anchor he gets stuck jumping like this, right? So what's really weak about this is like the ledge that's removed here. So if you have an T side over who um, who chose who like their B default player knows he jumps, if he scopes around here, the B player can't hear it, and then he can just come out and then kill him and go out. And then again, because on 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 the mostly lower levels, the short player will always go out short, right? That means that when the upper, he can actually make a calculated risk and run out and just hold this. And this is especially true in pucks, by the way. So a better way to play it is to use some uh, com like some different off angles, right? So you can use an off angle like this one here. So let me just like show you. So if you come out here as the T side, you're gonna clear this. And then you're gonna clear this and this here. And then you go out here and then you're already dead because you clear uh, down here. This is not a normal angle to clear. You can like you can even look you can look for it like this, right? But then you're not gonna think about it. Then you're gonna go out like this again. Okay. So uh, yeah, another angle that's really good is if you have an AUG or an AWP, you can sit like this. So you can actually you can just sit in different positions, right? And you can even sit in a position like this one. It's really uncommon. And just, you know, play from from that instead of jumping all the time. But this, again, it means that you have to have really good reactions with your teammates. Um, another way you can play it is like a really standard one where you have your B anchor player jiggle like this. And then you have your short player ready with a flash. So, which he can like swing on. God damn. So yeah, he lands there, he can swing, and then maybe smoke. And then you have like BF again. Another like really cool setup you can do here is um, if you have, you can either boost here, or you can uh, have your one of your guys jump up, and then either stand here, or you can stand here as well, or and come in, or come in and stand here. If one of them stands there and then the other one is jumping, it's gonna be a really good fake if he's not spotted when he's up there. Cause they, they're not gonna think it, they're gonna think the player is out short. So, like these are just a couple of like different setups you can use. Again, you have to find them yourself. Okay, so let's talk about team-wide setups. So what I mean by team-wide setups is, is setups where every single man helps each other to hold the entire thing down like the entire map all choke points right so you can have like a scenario okay let's say you have an offer who's posted here with a dp info right okay what what setups then think about it and do, do it like this way right so if you have your offer here where do you need your player like where can you have players so you can have a guy you can have two guys in ladder room for example you can have a guy standing here holding short you can have a guy Standing on this box, holding the connector and window, or even just be in ladder room and hold here, or you can have a guy just jiggling both, right? So, so th these are some of the things you can do. Okay, so if you have if you have that, right, then you can have a guy in jungle or in shadow here, watching jungle here. If you have the guy in ladder, you can like it. You don't have to have anyone holding the hold. Because he can like take it between the two, and then you can have maybe a um, have a guy at like default jiggling here or just default watching the palace, and then you can have a guy here in CC spawn jumping. You know, this this is for example a, a decent setup. You have a stack towards A, you have a fast rotation towards B with the ladder player. You can even have like. A CT player here holding holding here and then only have the ladder player focusing on short and then you can have again this guy he's gonna watch ramp and um, ramp and ramp and and palace 
and then the shadow player is gonna watch jungle push up you know so like this is just one but there's like a million different others you can use but you have to think about like what creative ways can you do to watch the entire thing like watch everything you can even have like you can have a guy here you know holding he can hold lateral he can hold a window and everything here right so if you have a guy here you could have a guy here watching the uh connector push up like or you can even yeah i don't know yeah he can yeah he can be here right and then you're gonna have again maybe an over ct just jiggling between these two angles and then you can have two guys on b standing in some kind of setup you know like maybe you have uh, you know the setup where this guy is standing ready with a flash and then and then you have like um this guy jiggling up here and peeking on it. or i don't know you can have like a um a defensive crossfire flash uh, setup where you have a guy watching here and then another guy standing like this on this side or i don't know like there's a million different ones you can have like a guy watching here this cross here and then you're gonna have a guy watching in this angle and then when he gets contact this guy can peek out you know like a lot of different setups you have to talk about and and find yourself you can have again this is like one of my favorites so if you have a guy standing up here and then you have this guy here so this guy peeks on the, the other guy's contact it, the same concept can be used with the guy standing here or if he stands here or here you know so if just like if this guy gets contact before that guy you can basically use that in a setup you can also again same principle uh with the guy standing here you can have him standing anti flash and then you can have this guy here maybe or again this one is probably better so when he sees him here uh it's actually even better if he if he stands crouched sits crouched here and then he can just jump up contact. again this this entire concept can be used as well so what's also really important is uh, the same as the short player can be more on b side the b player can actually be on short as well and that's like it's no biggie if you come out and then maybe if you want the talk if we talk about like the retake middle thing you can have and your upper smoke off you can have your offer again come out come uh, come here and then watch window or b house you know and then the two b players and a connector player can can go out mid with a molly you know and then flash and peek out so there's three rifles fighting you know again there's there's a million different possibilities so that's like a really important to think about and then lastly like um i'm gonna give you some cues something you can think about when you play your game okay so something you can think about is often the players on uh, on your ct side you can use some kind of logic and game sense to think what they're going to do next so if we take this as an example the t side do a oh yeah oh sorry also the same with with b execute if if you have to like practice against the b execute you have to again how, how are you gonna you know play against this talk about how whatever you know like keywords and and stuff for the b player and the short player uh, and try and practice it in an offline server where the two b players are here uh, holding it and then the three other guys are gonna uh, execute on them and then talk about how like if if you have a guy here and you have a guy behind the smokes if they're gonna fight together or not or if you're just gonna stay alive or if you're gonna yeah again talk about how you want to play against it okay so back to the other point so often guys oftentimes the um the t side is going to tell you what they're going to do so for example what you can think about that's really common especially in danish cs is if you have a let's see let's say that the you as a ct side lose against this uh, b execute right they come out you lose uh, two guys and you save because they have the entire site okay then something that's really really common and something you can basically you can almost count on it but again this is mostly your short player who's going to listen for it and and judge it so if they win that round right you can you can think like next time they come here or at least if they do it the round right after they're gonna fake it some way so if you see this the round afterwards you're gonna know that you can you can think okay well they're gonna fake it so if, if you do that you can basically that means they're gonna send one like one guy out right 
If they say one guy sent one guy out, you need you um you, the other guys either on A or uh, yeah. So the other guys on A no. Okay, well guys, it's gonna be A because because this guy up here maybe only heard this guy only heard two steps because if maybe the guy rushing out and then the guy flashing for him. So the A guys know that there's like three people left who's unknown. Again, they 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 can tell you because you have. You have like you you can hear the footsteps when they're running but again then when you know this you know you can make some fun trickery with it right another thing is um let's say they win on b they win on a b execute okay then they go a make an a execute and lose then mostly most of the time the t side is gonna go out middle and do something from middle and then if they lose on that they are definitely gonna go B again you know and if they win that then you know then it's gonna be a bit more harder to read but they, you know they're not gonna go A because they just won on mid and B and they lost hard on A okay so it also it depends on how you lose again but you can have like set up these kind of principles on on your CT side as well and and basically let your game knowledge together with this information I just gave you try and and think about how you're gonna do that and how how you can apply it to your own game and again this is just a bunch of methods you can use to your own team and then think about how how can i apply this to my team what do i want to take from this what do i not want to take from this and so forth and so forth so i hope you found you guys found this useful please any feedback i would love to have it and um yeah cheers